Welcome. All right, so in this case, what we're going to be doing is talking about how to factor our perfect squares. So when, I wanna, when I'm looking into factoring perfect squares, again, what we're going to be talking about is some trinomials of ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, in this case, um, I'm not going to be worried so much about the a. I'll, I'll kind of get into some of those examples. Um, and throughout the course, you know, we'll have some of those. But for right now, let's just pretend our a is going to be 1. So let's just do with our x squared. Now, when we're dealing with a perfect square, what that, what that basically is telling us is we're telling us it's going to be a, a expression multiplied by itself. Just like when we had a term, x times x, we said that was x squared. Well, x plus 1 times x plus 1, that is x plus 1 squared. All right? And when you multiply out by that self, a lot of times you're going to have a perfect square in this format. And what we want to do is rewrite that so it's in the format of a perfect square or what we see as a binomial squared, which is very helpful later when we want to get into solving quadratics, um, solving quadratics by the square root method. So when looking at a perfect square trinomial, there's a couple things that need to be, need to be emphasized. Um, what we're going to have is we're going to have the exact same terms. x, um, for in this case, let's say x plus p times x plus p. Now, uh, let's see where p times p is equal to c. Or you could say p squared is equal to c. So it's going to be the exact same values are going to multiply to give you c. And then 2p, or really just p plus p, is going to equal b. OK? So when we're looking into factoring a perfect square, what we want to be able to determine is, is our c a square number? And is our b double of what we are double of our, the square root of those numbers? And let's go and take a look at one. So let's say I have x squared plus 4x plus 16. So I say, all right, is 16 a square number? And you could say, yes, square, um, 16 is a square number. The square root of 16 is 4. All right, is my b 2 times 4? And in this case, no, it is not. So this is not a perfect square trinomial. However, if I wrote this as 8, you could say, yes, that is a perfect square trinomial. Because now I have 4 times 4 right, gives me 16. And now 2 times 4 gives me 8. So therefore, the factored form of this would be x plus 4 times x plus 4, or x plus 4 squared. Okay. Now, it's also important, though, to notice that perfect square trinomials are not always going to be in a positive format. We could also have perfect square trinomials that are negative. All right, But it's important for us to look at this and notice that, well, if I'm going to have two factors that are exactly the same negative, whenever I multiply them, they have to give me c. So in this case, the properties are still going to apply. My c has to be a squared number. And I have to take my two factor forms, uh, my, my two outer terms, and multiply the given them c. And they have to, those two outer terms have to be exactly the same. And then I have to have my 2 and my 2b has to be equal to b. So, um, so in this case, I could have one that would be like, uh, let's see, x squared minus uh, 6x plus 9. So you could say, all right, well, what two numbers multiply to give me 9 that are exactly the same? You could say 3 and 3. Well, is 6 the same as 2 times 3? Yes, but it's negative. So therefore, my 3 has to be negative. So I could factor this into x minus 3 times x minus 3 or x minus 3 squared. So just remember, these two terms have to multiply to give me your last term and add them together or just multiply one of them by 2 to give you your middle term. Now, the last thing I'll just kind of go through is what if I had an extra term? As I talked about before, um, you, you know, let's say I had an a, or let's say I do a coefficient. So let's, let's do one more. Let's say I have um, uh, 16x squared minus 10x plus 25 x to the fourth. All right. So in this example, again, what we have to be able to do is determine, oh, I mentioned this. But when you're perfect square trinomials, your, your first term and your last term both have to be squared terms. So I notice what two values multiply to give me 25x to the fourth? Well, my p's in this case have to be 5x squared, because 5x squared times 5x squared is going to give me 25x to the fourth. 
But in this case, my x is here. What two values are going to multiply to give me um, my x squared terms? Well, in this case, it has to be 4x times 4x. So now my expression is going to be 4x times 4x, 5x squared, times 4x times 5x squared. The only thing now what I need to do is determine, are these going to be positive or negative? Well, we know that no matter what, they're always going to multiply to give me a positive 25x to the fourth. But since they're adding to give me a negative 10x squared, I know that both those values are going to be negative. So remember the perfect square trinomial, when you're factoring them, you're going to have the exact same factors. Now, one last thing I can always tell you to notice that when you're not going to be able to use a perfect square trinomial is one, when your first or your last term are not negative, uh, or I'm sorry, are not square terms, and as well is when your c is negative. Because if when your c is negative, it doesn't matter if your middle term is positive or negative. You can't have the exact same terms multiply to give you a negative, um, negative c. For, exa for example, x squared minus 18x minus 81. Well, you might say, well, 9 times 9 gives me 81, right? But you can't write that as x plus 9 times x plus 9. That's not going to give you 81. Or x minus 9 times x minus 9. The only way you could do that would be negative 9 plus 9, but then that's going to be a difference of two squares and not what we're going to be looking for um, as far as a factoring of perfect squares. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is a nice little brief overview of factoring using perfect squares. Thanks.